what do you think your life would look like today if you never went? Mm. I'd be divorced, unfortunately. Um, and I would believe that the reason I was divorced is because my husband was the problem. Yeah, I'm stable. Oh, yeah, no label. Oh, yeah, you know me. I have only a best. I'm lonely. But damn, I'm going to wait. Yeah. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, you know, as you and I both know, being graduates of personal growth and development, this is truly like one of the most beneficial things any individual can do to change their life, change a direction and create a life of their dreams. And I know, you know a little earlier this week, I shared my story. I've been able to share some other stories. And I truly believe that by sharing these different perspectives, these different backgrounds and experiences, and it really does show that, you know, it, it isn't the individual, it isn't the trauma, it isn't what you've been through, it's the choices you make and then ultimately what you decide with what you learn um, yeah. that can build you up and make you truly big or put you back in the gutter, right? Yeah, and so I'd love great. to hear all of that about you. But before we do dive in, Melissa, let us know a little bit about <clears throat> who you are for maybe people who are tuning in for the first time, have no idea who the amazing woman on this call is. <laughs> let us know, just two minutes, who is Melissa Evans? Thank you so much, Chris, for having me here. And I'm so excited to share um, all of my insights. And who I am is I'm a, a woman who had an 18 year sales career, who was unhappy in a failing marriage, who thought, you know, that the, as good as it was going to get was my six figure career. And it was pulled out from under me in 2020. And when that happened, I thought my world was going to fall apart. And, um, you know, I was, I'm a praying person. Not everybody is. So I'm just going to say that. And I was praying and, and God said, I'm taking you on a journey for you. It could be the universe or, you know, maybe you're taking yourself on a journey. But I, in that moment realized that I had some growth to do. And I started an online business and realized very quickly that all of the trauma in my life that I didn't even realize was, was there was holding me back. And over the last year and a half, I've built a business coaching other women to help them build, scale, and sell their online offers and break that glass ceiling in their business that they have uh, imposed on themselves. And um, today, if, if you were to have told me two years ago that I would be where I am today, I would have laughed at you because, you know, what would have made me leave a high six figure career, nothing but purpose and Dry, uh, that determination to make my dreams uh, a reality was the case. And the people I'm working with now, I just I couldn't be more happy to see them blossom into the businesses that I know that is inside of each and every one of us. I love it. Purpose driven. That sounds, I mean, what else, what other way to live life? I mean, that to me right. is the most fulfilling way to live is, is living with purpose. So I love that. Absolutely. Let me ask you, this is something that you may or may not know. And I'd love to hear if you did know this beforehand, you know, okay. hindsight is 2020, right? It's the gift that lets us see so clearly, but when we're going through the process, it's not always so easy to see. And one of the things I love to ask is when you first took on the journey of personal growth and development, were you aware <laughs> that there were some behaviors, some habits, some things that you were doing subconsciously that weren't serving you? Or was it after you took yourself on that you were like, oh, wait, that's what I'm doing. And then you addressed it. How was it for you? Well, for me is I have tried to run businesses in the past and I kept running up against a roadblock. I didn't want to build teams. There was something in me that felt aloof, but I didn't understand what it was. And I knew it was a block because I would see other people who I was just as capable as running businesses. And I thought, I'm smart. Why can't I do this? And it was almost like I didn't want to join other people and I didn't really understand what it was. I don't know that I ever would have taken on another business had I not lost my job in 2020. But when I did, I realized very quickly that I was the problem. It wasn't the business model, that there was something in me that was missing and I didn't really understand what it was. And uh, there's a quote by Diane von Furstenberg, who's a designer and an entrepreneur. And today it resonates with me, but at the time I wouldn't have understood it. And it was, I didn't always know what I wanted to be, to do, but I knew the woman I wanted to become. Mm. So many, I went to the business going, I'm going to, I'm going to smash this. I'm strong. I'm tough. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, 
masculine energy all over this thing. And I realized really quickly that I wasn't being vulnerable and that I didn't know how to be that because of things that happened to me in my life. And so no, yes and no, I knew there was something, but ultimately I had no idea how deeply it went back and how much I really had to work on before I started my business. It's, it's you know, to me, entrepreneurship is the perfect counseling uh, session. It's better than therapy in many ways because you want it so badly that you will do anything. You will become that person that is capable of making it happen because so much is at stake for you at that point. And I, I, I'm so passionate now about showing people that you don't have to be at that place to make that decision for yourself. And that's what many of these events that we've been to have actually really created that space for people to come to that sooner without being in a crisis mode. Yeah. Uh, wow. Let me, I think this would be an interesting little experiment. What do you think your life would look like today if you never went? Mm. I'd be divorced, unfortunately. Um, and I would believe that the reason I was divorced is because my husband was the problem. I would be probably trying to build a business, um, maybe having some success, but unhappy. I would be drinking all the time. I mean, in the industry that I came from, it's really common. There's a lot of stress. The more money you make in a, a in a sales career where you're not owning your own time, the more stressful it is. And a lot of people sit around and do a lot of drinking and, you know, commiserating over there. I think that's common. And I would, I would just be unhappy, probably overweight and just not a, not the type of human being. I mean, I don't know that I was always the nicest human being, honestly. And I, I say that knowing that I probably was, but I didn't believe that I was. I didn't have that self-love in myself to understand that I had something to offer. So I would just be surviving right now. Scary, but I'm also yeah. really grateful to say that that is not what happened and you did no. take some different thing. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's a scary, scary reality. If, if, if you had never taken that on, yeah. um, you know what no, you did take it on and your life is very yeah. different today. And you, you actually, sure you know, live with purpose and you're very passionate and honestly, very inspiring, successful woman. Yeah, thank um, you. what are some of the things that give me like one or two that you pulled from personal growth and development pulled from being in these experience that you apply every day in your life? I just did a post about this today and I know that you'll resonate with this, Chris, because you shared this at an event when we were together somewhere is the gap hmm. is creating the gap between the experience that happens to you, the space to feel and understand that the feeling you're feeling, if it's very strong is coming from a trauma response or a limiting belief that's making you respond to that person or that event. And I've learned to take that space and go, why am I responding like this? And what is it about me that makes me feel I need that so much from that person or from this, this situation? And that has created this self-reflection in me that allows me to analyze my what I'm doing. And it's allowed me to get to a set, another gear, a, another gear where I'm not living in fear. Because even in our, if you really look at your time, even on the on the daily, before you go live, how often do you hesitate and do you take five or 10 minutes to overthink what you're doing? And if you add up all those little bits of time throughout your day, how much time are you wasting living in fear? And I realized I was living in fear a lot and looking for validation outside. So, you know, the gap, creating that gap allowed me to self-reflect and understand that I'm in control of my feelings. Mm -hmm. And I never would have been able to have the strength to do that had it not been for, for insight, honestly. That's one. <laughs> I, love I don't know if you no, want to share that's, another. That's yeah. great. If you have another one, I'd love to hear it. The gap is awesome. Um, yeah. The, the other thing for me is, and I don't want to get too heavy into to trauma because trauma could be small T, little T, you know, small T, big T. We're meaning making machines. And as human beings, everything we assign meaning to, and even as a child, there would be things that would be said that were innocent that I assigned meaning to, that I've learned to deal with now. But talking about trauma or life experiences in a way that's healing is not normal. It's not normalized in our society. Going to an event that I think of, people talk about the coaching container a lot and this idea of a container. And maybe you don't really know what that means, but to me, a container is where life experiences are shared. And to me, this event was like a container of 
people who were open and sharing their experiences and everybody came with a different level of expertise. So someone like you, Chris, might share something that I would learn from if it was my first time. And the next time I would have more courage to share and then I would help someone else. Mm. And it's this chain of belief that we're building. And if the world was like that, imagine what we could accomplish, what, what things we could change in the world if we were able to normalize this idea that our fear doesn't have to define us and we don't have to hide from it. And it's actually there to teach us what our purpose is. And so that was the biggest like paradigm shift that happened for me was that not only does everyone have a purpose, but it's our God given right to find it. And then we need to live it for ourselves, our family, for the world. So, and I've been to personal development events and not once have I ever experienced that Hmm. at my 54 years. This was the first event that actually broke me open in a way that I never really thought in a good way that I never really thought would happen. So. I love that. So I don't know if, you, <laughs> if this is relative to you. I'd love to hear it. So for me, when I took insight, I took insight because I knew I was my biggest stopping point, right? I was the, mm-hmm. the roadblock in my success. Um, and I went there because I wanted to have bit more financial success, right? I wanted to right. create a bigger business than I had ever done. And I knew that if I didn't get out of my own way, I was never going to do it. But the fortunate side effect of that is that I became a better parent. I became a better yes. husband. I became a better communicator. Like all these other doors opened up for me and and my life became like 10 X better in all these different Mm. categories. So was there any positive side effects? We'll call it for you uh, attending insight that maybe you didn't think you were going to receive walking in. I alluded to the fact that if I hadn't been to this event, that I would be divorced right now. And I honestly, just before right just as i was losing my job was contemplating divorcing my husband and long story short over the year and a half from inside and on the shifts that i made in myself made me look at my husband in a completely different way and realize that i wasn't letting love in yes we all have our things that we're going to deal with and i began to be more open and loving and surprisingly all the things i was trying to make my husband do before were starting to happen because I was just being more open and loving. And you think I would know that academically, but there's something energetic that has to happen in you, a shift that has to happen for you to go from here to here. And that happened. And today, I mean, no, no marriage is perfect. I mean, marriages work. That's one thing they don't teach us when we're in school. It's supposed to be love and, you know, rainbows and hearts. And it's really that, and it's hard work sometimes and it's worth it. And, I think today my marriage is stronger than it's ever been and it's growing stronger every day. And I never would have thought that was even possible coming out of an event that I went to because I wanted a strong business like you. So yeah, huge side effect that's been super impactful in my life. I love it. One of the things that uh, a lot of graduates of this seminar of these, of the trilogy of seminars uh, talks about, is that they found a community. Mm. They found something more there. Did that happen for you? And what did it look like? So, yes. Um, Coming from, I'm going to go back to trauma for just a second. When you are, when you're, when you experience trauma in your life, whatever age it is, you you retreat from the world and then you teach people how to treat you. So then people that are around you are not always the healthiest people because you're a, you don't think you're worthy of success and great friendships and great love. So as you begin to develop, you start, you, you start feeling that gap in a different way, that gap between that you're not aligned with the people that you're around and you start feeling alone and you realize, man, I, I, I need to lean into something more positive here. And like I said before, when you go to these events and you're around people that are at all different levels and you're 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 raising each other up and you're supporting each other, you create these friendships where I could call anyone from one of these events and say, hey, this is Melissa. And they would say, what what can I do for you? And they would be there for me. They would drop everything or most things to come and help you with something because they're on this. They have a similar vision to what you have in the world. And that's been 
the power of community through this event. And that's not something you, when you go to another event, you may or may not meet someone, you may stay in, touch, in contact with them, but you're not building that, in my opinion, impactful community that you're getting when you go through the trilogy. And I've been through all three events. I love, hearing, I love hearing you say that because for me and a lot of military, you know, veterans um, and even first responders, like we're, we're so intertwined that we become family when mm -hmm. we're in. And then when we get out, it's like you lose your family, right? It's like you, yeah. you've lost everything. And for me personally, um, I couldn't. And I also most of my friends are not alive anymore, too. So that's a different mm -hmm. factor, right? Um, I can't even reach out to them if I wanted to. Um but for me, the only thing that that gave me a sense of community and belonging again was the after effect of going through this and what what came out the other side. Not only the community I attached myself to, but the person I was able to step back into personally um, yes. and actually be a functioning member of a community and a society. Um, that to me was a huge, huge step up because I was shut down. I was yeah. not at all trying to contribute. So. I really love hearing that 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 you hearing you say that as well because it was a huge driving force for me. One last question I want to ask yeah. uh, before we wrap our time up, and that is, if you were to be in a conversation with somebody about going to Insight or whether or not that it would be a good fit for them, their loved one, someone they care about, what would you say to them? Well, I would, I would first say that if you're being offered the opportunity to have a gift that is insight, that that means someone sees something in you that you might not even see in yourself yet. And they know you well enough to know that you want something amazing in your life. And maybe you're just not sure how to get it yet. And maybe you feel lost. And if one event, could, could change everything and and it can they would they would do anything to give that to you and i i would just suggest to anyone who's on the fence about the opportunity is do it what do you what do you have to live the, the worst thing that could happen is you become a better human being and the best thing is you change your life completely which is what's happened to me and i know for you too yeah. um and then you know I, I work with a lot of women that have been through trauma, but they're building online businesses and same thing. They feel isolated and alone and don't feel like they have a voice. And I found this ability to give back and support those people in a way that I never thought I could just through one event. So do it, man. It, it's life changing. That's all I have to say about that. Um, well, perfectly <laughs> said and enough said, right? Is yeah. there anything else in the topic of insight, personal growth and development that you'd like to share, talk about before we end our time here today? Um, you know, I, I just wanna, what's coming to mind is fear. And I, I know that there's gonna be, there are a lot of people right now that are passionate about this opportunity, they're sharing it. And it, you know, the message is gonna get to the right ears, but sometimes fear stops us and the opportunity passes us by. And there's only so many opportunities that we get to gift. And I know that the if the person out there is is feeling hesitant and they I just I just want the right people to understand it's time to lean in because it, it it's time for us to make a huge impact in the world. And you're making an impact, I'm making an impact. Everyone that we know that is part of our community that has been to these events. They're all making an impact in the world and you're not alone. You're not the only one that has a big vision for your life and you're not the, you know, purple elephant in the room. And if you are, it's a good thing because we're all purple, purple elephants. <laughs> Just get, get to your people, go to the event, get to your people and let us, let us support you. That would be, I guess what I could say in closing. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for your time, for sharing your story, for having the courage to jump on and and be vulnerable and and share yeah. the you know the insights of your life and what you've been through and what's benefited you. Um, really, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. All right. Have a good one. Good afternoon. Talk <laughs> to you later. <laughs>